heart. He wants your soul. He wants your devotion. He wants your commitment. He doesn't just want a Sunday morning attendance. He doesn't just want a tithe check. He wants you. He bled, suffered, and died not so you could go through a ritual, not so you could go through some dead formalism, but he died that he could be in relationship with you, an intimate, close relationship that defies the scripture that the world cannot display. Explain, come on. I'm talking about the God who wants you and he wants your heart. Hallelujah. Just put your hand on your chest and say, he wants me. Isn't it good to be wanted? You are wanted. And turn to somebody and tell them, there's a wanted poster on you. And Jesus paid the reward. Hallelujah. Amen. You are wanted today. And so I just want to tell you, you may be here, someone invited you, maybe someone brought you, and you're not sure really what all this church stuff is about or the Bible or, or God or anything. I just want to tell you today that God wants to show you how much he loves you. God wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal your life. He wants to bring peace and meaning and fulfillment to you if you turn your life over to him. He wants your heart. Amen. Now let's look at this verse. Micah brought them back to God. Micah was bringing them back to God's word. See, see watch what he says in this first, breath, first phrase. The Lord has already told you what is good. What was he saying there? He's, he's actually bringing them back to the word of God. He's already told you. Well, what, did, what was it? It was the word of God. They already had the word of God. He was pointing them back to the Bible. And so he shares two truths that I want to share with you this morning and uh, very quickly. And he, he says these two truths in these verses are going to help us walk closer to God. And I want us to look at them because understanding the light of this revelation in the context of walking with God is going to position you to walk deeper with him than ever before. Anybody ready to go deeper with this? Yeah. Amen. Anybody want to walk close to the Lord? Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have a better amen? amen? Now look at the first part of this verse. He has shown you what is good. Somebody shout good. good. So here's truth number one. Truth number one. God is good. God, I'm so sorry for all you uh, theologians out there that I did not come this morning with a deep, mysterious, huge uh, uh, truth to blow you off of your chair and think about wow I love the eloquence in that no no I just came by to remind you that God is a good God I came by this morning to tell somebody I don't know what you're facing today but when you leave this service and you go in and you go home God is still going to be a good God to you when you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground to be a good God. I don't care what you have to face. I don't care what you have to go through. He's going to be a good God to you. He's going to be right there with you. When you have plenty, He's good. When you don't have enough, He's good. When you don't know where to turn or who to go to, God is a good God. Every good thing comes from above, from the Father of lights, in whom is no variables or shadow of turning. Come on. Every good thing in your life is because He's a All the time. Amen. He's so 
good. Has he ever been good to anybody in here? Amen. He's good. He's good. He was telling Israel. He's already shown you what is good. He is good. Just look in the book. He was pointing them back to the Bible. Let's look at Deuteronomy 10, 12. Micah was actually pointing them back to this truth. And now Israel, what does the Lord, your God, require of you? Sounds very similar, doesn't it? To what Micah was saying. That's what I was telling you. You don't know, you don't, you say, well, I don't know what to tell somebody. I don't know what to minister to somebody. I don't got, I don't have a leading. I don't feel like a, a gift of the spirits and manifestation. You point them to the book. That's exactly what Micah was doing. What does the Lord your God require of you? He requires you to fear him, live according to his will, love and worship him with all your heart and soul. Wow. And then he said to obey the Lord's commands and laws that I am giving you today for what? For whose good? For your own good. Think about it. Isn't that amazing? God, everything God is telling us, Everything that he showed us, the ways that he wants us to walk in, it is for our own good. My grandmother said something one time. She said, it pays to serve God even if you weren't a Christian and weren't saved and you lived according to the principles of this word. It would bless you because it's true and it's the word of God. It pays to serve God. Some people look at serving God like, oh, I'm going to just, oh, I'm going to lose so much. If I walk with God, if I turn my life over to Him, oh, you, you precious thing. Sacrificing and turning over so much for Jesus. Aren't you wonderful? Bless your little palpitating heart. Amen. No, He's good. He's good. And, and He wants to bless you. And He wants to be good to you when you walk in His ways. Let me tell you, you, you all you're going to give up is pain. All you're going to give up is sorrow. All you're going to give up is heartbreak of, of being out there in the world, drinking and partying and getting your heart broken. Oh, come on. So I, I don't know. Some of y'all act like you didn't do any of that. Come on. I know what I'm preaching to. Listen, there ain't nothing out there for me. There ain't nothing out there that can, that can is going to bless me. All the blessings are yet. and say, he's been so good to me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You turn your life over to him and you'll never regret. You'll never regret walking away from what you think is a sacrifice. Hallelujah! All he wants to do is bless you and be good to you. Ah, it's amazing. It's amazing to me that some people look at serving God and living for the Lord like I'm going to miss out on so much. And you are. You're going to miss out on a lot of destruction and hurt by walking. Some people just, they look at tithing like, oh, it's like pulling teeth or cutting off my right arm. Oh, oh you're going to get the blessing of God. Oh, you're going to get some window of heaven open on your finances in your life. Amen. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I want that. I may be a few bricks shy of a load, but I know that God says it's for your good, Paul. Listen, I got good news for you today. You don't serve an old, mean, stingy bully. But you serve a great, big, awesome God. Amen. And he is on your side. And he is for you today. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But God's trying to get something across to you. That he's got greater things for you than you've ever imagined. He wants to bless you. He wants to pour out goodness and favor and surround you with his grace like a shield. You don't serve a big, ugly, older God. You serve a wonderful, beautiful Jesus who wants to help you. But can I have an amen? amen. Say, so what is God? What is God like? We know what God is like through His Word, and we know what He requires through the Word. Now, listen to this. You want to know how God, how good God is? I love Psalms 105. For the Lord is come on, say it with me. For the Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all, A-double-L, 
all, come on, hold that out, all generations. That includes us. As long as there's seed time and harvest, as long as life is in existence, come on, all generations. I, I don't know about you, but that kind of blesses me. I love Psalm 23, the Lord who's my shepherd. He's my shepherd and I shall not want. God takes care of our wants. I'm not, I don't have any wants today. I don't live in a, a mansion, but I don't have any wants. I'm blessed. And you know what, God? He'll take care of your wants, but he'll take care of your wanter. Paul said, I found whatever state I'm in, I'm content. Why? Because Jesus fills the gap. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then he said, if that wasn't enough, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Sterling, I love that. All the days of my life. Somebody says, well, I, you, you, you're just afraid to talk to them because they will tell you all the bad stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? You walk up to them, how you doing? And you just almost don't want them to tell you. You know what you can say? I don't know about all that, but all I know, the Bible says, goodness and mercy are following me. Good, yes, there's going to be tough times. Yes, there's going to be hard times. Yes, things may not always turn out right, but goodness and mercy are going to be there. Amen. How good is God? Look at Psalm 103.3. He forgives all. Somebody shout all. Are you seeing that word pop up again and again? All your sins, and he heals just one of your diseases? Some of them. You're not a double L all. Now that sounds like a good God to me. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now here's the second truth. Now watch me listen closely. Truth number two. Yes, God is good. Number two, you can't earn his goodness. You can't earn it? Well, preach on, Pastor Paul. You can't earn God's goodness. That's what he's saying. That's what Micah said. What does the Lord require of you? He's talking about the Old Testament law. And man cannot keep that law. And God actually gave the law. And Galatians says that the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. When you tremble before a holy and just God and you see that law, the Ten Commandments, and you start going through those commandments and you see that you've broken those commandments, all of a sudden you realize, I can't keep that. I can't do that in and of myself. i got to have some help. And so that's what the law was meant to do, the requirements. And that's what I'm saying to you. You cannot keep the commandments. You cannot keep that law in and of yourself to try to please God. That way it's going to be a very miserable existence trying to live your life like that. And I'm just glad today I don't punch a time clock with Jesus. I'm glad that I'm not on the brownie point system with God. Why is that? He's my father. And you may have chores and things that you want your kids to do. You give them responsibilities around the house. But your love for them is not based upon their performance of those things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You love them because they're your child. And I got news for somebody today. You're a child of the Most High God. You're a child. You're, you're, you're through your veins runs royal blood, the royal blood of Jesus. You are a child. 